Hey everyone, this is the Black Manga Critic, and I'm here with the review of Boku no Hero Academia, chapter 154. Now, basically, we got um, an amazing, we got some amazing, amazing chapters prior to this chapter. Um, and this was a great chapter. Um, I, I don't know, like at least for me, it it wasn't like an incredibly hype chapter. I don't know why. Like, I, like I don't think that it wasn't like, like I'm not saying it wasn't like a phenomenal chapter or anything like that. It just like whatever reason, the hype wasn't there for me. And I'm not sure why that is. I, like, I can't, like, put my finger on it. Um, but, like, my, the hype wasn't there in the same way that, like, it was with um, Miri, when Miriel was fighting Shisaki um, and when Kirishima was fighting Rappa. Um, you know, like, fight, like, battles like that. Like, those chapters were, like, like, man, like, I could not stop. Like, 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 I, like, it was ridiculous. Like, my heart was palpitating. Like, um, was, like, pal palpitating. You know what I mean? Like, sit, like, shit like that was happening. But for this chapter, like, it was really, really good. I liked it a lot, but it wasn't hype. And I don't I don't know why. But we are going to talk about a couple of things because I think there were some awesome, awesome things that did happen. Um, and we are going to talk about, like, those things. So the three things that I really want to talk about um, are, one, uh, you know, we got to talk about um, Deku and his um, ability and what it sort of means for, you know, this battle and for kind of the narrative going forward and things of that nature. Two... Um, talking about Night Eye and the fact that he's probably dead, and may, and if he's not dead, he's gonna end up like Mike Guy from Naruto, you know, in a, in, a, in a wheelchair, um, or um, you know, um, he's gonna become an invalid and sit in his you know home all the time, um, and things of that nature, right? Um, and three, um, you know, I want to talk a bit about um Chisaki and what's going on with his character and why I think people that are annoyed about the way that Chisaki has sort of been used. Um, can, you know, can feel that way, but I think there's a reason why that's happening and why Hori Koshi is sort of downplaying, not downplaying, but like is sort of, um, underutilizing Chisaki as a character. So if we're going to get into the first thing, um, you know, and, that, and that's Deku, right? And talking about the sort of 20%, you know, um, uh, using his, using the one for all ability, um, right. And getting the 20% and being able to sort of like battle Shisaki for a bit, um, in that sense, like, that's something that I think that, like, um, we kind of needed, because there was a way in which, like, people were, I think, rightly complaining about, um, the fact that, sort of, like, Deku would kind of, like, incrementally sort of grow stronger, at least when it comes to, like, um, sort of, like, okay, moving from, like, 5% to, like, 8%, like, I think it would make a bit more sense to be moving sort of, like, increments of 5 Something about that just seems more round. Maybe it's like the sort of like like mild OCD in me or the Virgo in me or whatever. But like I feel that like moving from like 5% then to 10% then to 15% to 20% like something like that like would be a bit better. But I guess like um in terms of the math like it makes more sense to be to be a bit more incremental because that's sort of like um in line with the sort of like how much time is going by, how much stronger Deku um is actually getting physically. Um, and mentally and stuff like that. So I guess it makes some, I guess it sort of makes sense in that way. Um, but if we're talking about like what, um, like 20%, I, I think it's fine here because in this situation, Deku, um, right. The second Deku comes into the battle, he immediately assesses the situation and is like, what the hell am I going to do? How, what can I do? What are my options? Things like that. What's his, what's the, what are the, what's the setting, right? So he, I think he almost immediately understands that like, okay, I've got to try and fight this guy and figure out what I can do at this point at 8%, right? At 8, um, at 8%. And then once he realizes that, like, yo, at 8%, like, that ain't going to do shit to this guy because this guy's like, if, if I don't, you know, change my ways and if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, um, you know, and really, like, do the hero thing, I'm actually going to die, right? So in some senses, um, like, in other videos, I've really, t I've been harping, harping, harping about what it means to be a hero, what it means to be a Yakuza, what it means to be a villain, um, in particular situations and how, like, and how being one of those things is particularly, um, can be helpful or can be particularly helpful or harmful in set situations, right? So in this situation, when he's fighting Shizaki, one thing about Deku was that Deku was sort of a character, um, sort of archetype that is really good at, um, trying to upend, um, his own archetype, right? So there's a way in which, like, he's very much a hero, he rushes in, he does these things, but... He's very, like, calculating. And that's something that, like, heroes aren't necessarily um, amazing at, but Deku is pretty amazing at, right? I think that if you look at, like, a lot of other heroes, what they would do is, like, they, they might they might scam, they might, you know, um, kind of, like, 
very like sort of quickly and kind of lazily lazily like come up with um a sort of battle tactic like to come up with battle tactics but Deku when Deku comes up with battle tactics it's, it's like he's doing the battle he's he's coming up with battle tactic tactics in a way that a yakuza um would in the way that someone like the Chisaki would so there's a way there's a way in which like Deku is almost like um one of like the best opponents to fight Chisaki because Chisaki is very much of a cerebral um, um, Yakuza, right, a, a cerebral, cerebral character in that he is a Yakuza, right? Because I've, oh, I've been harping that Yakuza are very much so all about organization and planning and thinking about strategy and stuff like that for the betterment of the Yakuza organization. So Deku is very much so a hero that sort of like, um, you know, in a, in a, in a sort of way, um, is consistently attempting to subvert that hero sort of, um, um, archetype that he's been placed in. And it's interesting. So that in this battle, so that 20%, right? Sometimes you might you might look at like that twenty percent and be like, oh, that actually means that you know Deku is kind of um you know again playing the hero, and Deku in some ways like um is go always going to play the hero because he is a hero, right? But in another way, Deku really sort of shows that like um within that sort of archetype that is a hero, there are like subsections of that, right? And Deku is very much sort of like the sort of intellectual hero in the way that like he will go in and he will still have like um you know and 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 try to save the day. But the fact that he goes 20% is not because, like, he's like, I'm just going to do this because I didn't think about what I should do and everything like that. In other situations, this is, Deku would have been like, oh, man, fuck it. I just got to go for, for the gusto and hurt myself and blah, blah, blah. But he's steadily learned that, oh, I am only going to use, um, you know, more power than I need to um, um, when the situation calls for it, right? In this situation, it doesn't call for him to use 100% of the power and destroy himself. Um, you know, you know what I mean? Like, but he's saying like, okay, I've observed the situation. I've observed his battle tactics. I've looked at Tosaki and I figured that if I use 20% of my power, I can still move, maintain my body movements and things like that. My fighting style and, um, still battle this guy effectively. That's like, like to me, like that's like the type of growth that you'd like to see in characters. You want to see them say like, you want to see heroes grow, um, in a way that sort of, uh, not only, um, a, like that are not only attempts to upend, um, the sort of generic hero or Western comic book superhero archetype, but it's also a way in which like you really get to see just how much sort of heroes are sort of like, um, you know, have sort of subsections to them. And Deku is very much so an intellectual hero. So the second thing that I really wanted to talk about um, is um, looking at Night Eye. And Night Eye is a sort of classic case of sort of like um, a tragic hero in a, in a lot of ways, because anytime you have um, a hero or a, a villain or a character that can see the future, it's almost always detrimental to that character, right? And to that character's growth, I think, in a lot of ways. Because, like, Night Eye is very much so a hero that's sort of like, oh, well, you know, I can read into the future, so I'm kind of, you know, I'm going to be calm and cool and collected. And the only time that Night Eye really isn't calm and cool and collected is when he, um, All Might's involved, right? Or when, um, uh, you know, individuals that are related to All Might are involved. So there's a way in which, like, here, in this chapter we sort of get to see just how tragic of a hero Night Eye, Night Eye is. Because not only does Night Eye end up, like, getting, like, impaled um, by Chisaki, but he sees that he's going to be impaled. He already sees his tragic um, future. That's, like, man, that's, like, the epitome of, like, a tragic hero, like, in, like, any sort of, like, story, right? Because this story is all about um, heroes, villains, heroes, but particularly heroes. Um, and um, it's very much so, like, in the vein of sort of, like, the Western sort of comic, um, comic book tropes. Um, and I would say that Night Eye is sort of like um, a very, like a sort of reflection of like more modern sort of comic book tropes and like um, heroes that, uh, you know, like like sort of like Bronze Age, um, uh, Bronze Age and, um, right, like Bronze Age um, um, and modern age, like sort of like heroes um, in, within like Western comic books who have like, you know, either, you know, tragic past or, um, you know, have like, many narratives that are, or story arcs that are particularly tragic. And Night Eye, to me, is, like, a character that's, like, very much so tragic in this sense, right? Like, he's tragic in the sense that, like, you know, he, um, not only can he see his own sort of, like, um, death or, um, you know, impalement and, um, you know, he probably ain't gonna be doing the hero thing for, for quite some time, right? But also that he's tragic in that, like, his, um, in, in his connection to All Might, in his connection that, like, in some ways he probably feels that, like, a little bit responsible because he couldn't convince All Might to not, you know, do the hero thing um, and um, and end up being hurt by um, um, All For One, right? So there's a lot of ways in which, like, I think, like, Nada is very much so a tragic hero in that sense. 
Um, and in that way, Horikoshi, again, is sort of showing that, like, heroes um, very much so um, sort of carry with them burdens and in that way, like, can lead them to becoming tragic heroes. Not every hero is a tragic hero, right? But to me, Narai is very much so a tragic hero in the way that, like, not only is his future tragic, but he's able to see his tragic future. It's, it's very it's very sad. It's very just like, you know, like, man, I got, that's got to suck. You know, as you're battling, trying to fight against this tragic end, right? Like, it's, 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 it's interesting. And it's very, like, poignant. And I really appreciate that from Horikoshi. Again, I've been saying this, but I think that, like, Horikoshi's writing has, like, skyrocketed. There's a point where he was just, like, you know, really um, kind of just, like, doing a bit of cookie cutter stuff in a way. Um, but then, like, it almost seems like once Mo um, Boku no Hero Academia gained enough popularity and he, and he understood that he could sort of just do what he wanted to do, the story really picked up. And this arc was, like, particularly great. The arc um, when, um, you know, All Might versus All for One, all that stuff, like, really great stuff. Everything after that has been um, phenomenal. Um, so, if you're going to get into the third thing, um, the third thing that I wanted to get into is Chisaki and why um, Chisaki is um, an interesting, like, character and why, like, this character is utilized in the way that he's utilized. A lot of times, like, I think, like, I've heard, like, from a lot of, like, people on YouTube and stuff like that, maybe even Twitter, that, like, Chisaki is, like, underutilized and it's kind of sad and he's like, why isn't he, isn't he used more and blah, blah, blah. And it, it's because he's a Yakuza. Like, it's because that's his character type, right? There's a way in which Horikoshi, um, you know, also has... He tries to have characters that try to upend their characters, and sometimes they succeed, and sometimes those characters fail. Sometimes those characters are, you know, struggle against the archetype and fail to struggle against that archetype, and they fail to break free of it um, in any sort of way. So Chisaki is very much so a Yakuza in the sense that, like, he is not a villain. The thing about this story is that this, and, and because the story is very much so en enmeshed in the Western um, um, superhero comic book um, sort of archetypes, it's all about heroes and villains. Anytime you're reading a comic book, um, a Western comic book, um, that is um, very much so about um, heroes and villains, that's all it's about. Um, like, 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 like in, in, in a very like big sort of um, picture thing. It's always about the heroes and, and the decisions they make and blah, blah, blah. And it's always about the decision, the villains and the, the decisions that they make and how everyone else is affected by them and how everyone else affects them, right? So that, that it's always about those two archetypes, about those two character types. So here, Chisaki never really had a chance to be particularly um, in um, um, grandiose as a character or, um, you know, um, super, super, like, like impressively overpowered in the same um, sense that uh, All For One was, because All For One was a villain, right? All For One was, uh, was also a villain that was very good at continuing to try to subvert his own archetype but Chisaki is not a villain. Chisaki is a Yakuza. Yakuza are all about the plan. How do we get forward? How do we move forward with the plan? How do we do this methodically? Um, and Chisaki's plan is like very big, but it's also like, um, it's not um, a plan in the vein of sort of like what a villain is trying to do. Villains are always trying to take down um, heroes. That's like their basic thing. Villains are always all about like doing their own thing, but taking down villains, um, um, heroes in the process. They don't particularly like heroes. Right, so this that sort of duality is always sort of existent, and Horikoshi is very much so aware that his story is about heroes and villains. It really, it really is. Um, and so like the Yakuza sort of character um, um archetype doesn't have much of a place in that outside of sort of like creating a great narrative where we get to see how introducing a character such as Sasaki really allows us to see um what makes heroes and what makes villains, right? Because, like, if we just have heroes and villains, like, we can sort of see things um, in a very sort of, like, um, what's, um, binary sort of um, um, manner. But when we, once we enter, like, a third sort of um, option, a third character, then we really get that in-depth sort of, um, you know, analysis and, um, uh, um, you know, um, exploration of um, what it means to be a hero and what it means to be a villain, right? Because of that third um, sort of um, character. So I think that Chisaki, in, in a lot of ways, is basically just um, a character that's used um, to improve Horikoshi's, uh, Horikoshi's ability to um, explore what it means to be a hero and what it means to be a villain. And, it, and it's sad, that, and I think it, in some ways it's kind of sad that, that that's the case, because I think Chisaki, Chisaki would have been an amazing villain. I think he would, have been, he would have been a fantastic villain, and that would have added a lot of um, uh, you know, um, brevity to this story. But, you know, 
thumbs the brakes. You know, sometimes, like I said, sometimes as a character archetype, you are, as a character, like you're able to up, um, upend and um, subvert the um, archetype that you are situated in. And sometimes you are not. And here, Chisaki clearly is not. Chisaki clearly um, runs into a hero. He is stopped pretty much, pretty cold. And then, you know, yeah, he defeats like um, um, Lamillion, but um, and Meteo. But eventually, all these other heroes start to show up, and like it's very clear that like his plan is falling to pieces. And yes, he has um, you're at like 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 he's basically lost. But again, what I've been saying is that Chisaki has clearly um, made the heroes realize just how um, um, foolhardy their plan was, and just how much they need right, and even the villains, and just how much they need to work on being stronger, more methodical. Um, they need to include, they need to incorporate the skills that Chisaki. Um, has as a Yakuza leader into their own repertoire so that they can also um, attempt to um, subvert and break free of their character archetypes. So that's basically all I wanted to say about Boku no Hero Academia, um, th about this chapter. Um, I thought it was like a great, great, great chapter. I'm not, like like I said, like for whatever reason, I did not feel the hype, but that doesn't mean that I don't understand why other people felt the hype. I love this chapter. Um, I thought there were some great things in it. And again, this arc is fantastic. It does a lot in terms of showing us what it means to be a hero. Um, when we're thinking about the um, the um, Boku no Hero Academia's connection to Western comic book um, um, archetypes and um, tropes, right? And what it means to be a villain in relation to Western comic book archetypes and tropes. So that that's what's going on here, I think. So if you're reading Boku no Hero Academia, especially now, these are the sort of things that you have to keep in mind. Because when you're thinking about why characters you know, aren't doing certain things or why they're being utilized in certain ways, that's a big reason why. Horikoshi is clearly influenced by, you know, the the um, Supermans and the Batmans and the um, Green Lanterns and the, you know, um, um, indie stuff and all that, all, all that, all those um, Western comic book stuff. So this is was uh, this was a great chapter. Um, I loved it. It was great. Feel free to comment down below um, in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Find me on Twitter if you don't agree with some of the things that I've said. Um, I love I love conversation. Let's have a conversation. So I'm the Black Manga Critic. I know this uh, video was long, but enjoy it if you do. You don't have to watch all of it. And I'm out.